In this tutorial, I'm going to explain the concept of nice base for sentiment analysis. So this is the training data. As you can see, that it has sentences that are poetic. For instance, great product can be considered as a poetic sentiment. Difficult to use can be considered as negative. The question is that if we have a new sentence which we do not know is sentiment, how can we classify it? So this is the question. Is it I like the product? Is it poetic or negative? based on the training data. Before going to the detail of about sentiment analysis, let's just uh, get the basic idea about conditional probability. So this is the formula statement that you often see. So the basic idea is that let's just use an example to explain that. You are going to roll a die and define two events. Event A is that you get an even number. Event B is that you get a number that is greater than three. You can have a conditional probability that A given B, which is 2 over 2 by 3. You can also calculate this conditional probability using another format. For instance, P, probability of A and B, both of it happens, then the probability is 1 by 3 or 2 by 6. Then you can cal also calculate the probability of B, which is 1 by 2. Then you can get the same number, 2 by 3. Again, also you can write in another format, so you kind of reverse the A and B position. Then you can get like calculate P A is like half P B on the conditional A, so you basically reverse the conditional probability, the position. Then you can get two by three, and calculate the B also half. Then you put them together, you get the exactly same number. This is the the statement we just we just discussed. So actually, this the event A and B can be also uh, used in the situation of sentiment classification. So if the B is the, if this event is like instead of uh, rolling a die, you can like it's a sentence, and then the event A is uh, the the sentiment of positive or negative. In this case, so you can write like this. Yes, so that the A can be A, positive or negative, so there are two uh, probability. The question you're going to ask is that which probability is greater? If that probability is greater, then for instance, if positive is greater, then we can say that this sentence is positive. If negative is, is greater, then we say that this is negative. So that's the basic question we're answering by using nice base to do the sentiment classification. In order to calculate that, we need to look at the right-hand side of this formula statement. Basically, we can re replace the A with the P, politic, and N, negative. So as you can see that, basically, we are going to compare like which one has greater probability. As you can see that both of them has the have the denominator of PB, so we can basically cancel it out and we only focus on the numerator. To summarize, we can basically rewrite this formula statement in this format. And the new notation, the name is called proportional. And basically, we cannot ignore the denominator PB. Remind you that the B here is in the situation of sentiment classification. The B is the the test data, new sentence, and the A is either positive or negative. There's some names in the nice base. So the PA here is called prior, and the PA on A as base, and the B on the conditional A is likelihood, and then PB, B as base, and then A on the top of B is called posterior. So this is just some names you might have heard that before. Okay, so let's just ignore the, the middle part and focus on the left and right hand right side of the original formula. So we're going to focus, we ignore the denominator here. As mentioned, A can be the property or negative. Of course, sentiment classification can have more than two categories, can have another category called neutral. But here, to simplify the discussion, we only discuss Politic or negative binary outcome. Here, the P will replace the A with politic, 
or negative. So there are two probability yes. How to calculate the prior, namely the probability of positive and or probability of negative? We can based on the training data, and we can see that out of these five instances, politics has three instances and netic has two. So we can easily calculate the the prior probability of politic and probability of netic here. The most difficult part is to calculate the likelihood, namely uh, this part. How can we do that? In order to do that, we need to make some assumption. So basic idea is that this the I like the product. This is the test data, and basically we want to find the word in the training data. If the word doesn't exist in the training data, we ignore that. But if the word exists in the training data, we're going to calculate the, the likelihood, the probability. But as you can see, that this sentence has quite a few different words, and so and also different words have different positions. So we need to make some assumption. The assumption, the so the name nice assumption in the nice base basically is as, assume the conditional independent. So we're going to assume that the word I like the product or the conditional party analogy they are independent. This of course is not true. Most likely, it's not true in the real world. But as long as this assumption is not severely violated, in generally you can get decent result. So with this assumption, we can basically rewrite this part, so the right hand part, with this kind of format. So we can expand it, so we can calculate the likelihood of each word. Of course, uh, based on the training data, we do not really have to calculate every word because if the word doesn't exist in the training data, we can ignore that. So let's look at more closely. So this is the training data. Basically, we can create a table. That's the way I like to do that. So let's just read the sentence one by one. The first sentence is called "great product." So we, the first word is "great." So we can just put the word "great" here, and then it has frequency of one in the category of party. And basically, we do every sentence, every word like this, and put it as a table. So in the end, you can get this kind of table. And so with this table, we can basically easily calculate the likelihood for each word. This is the end result. So what it means that, for instance, the first one, pi on the on the conditional of politics. So basically, you look at the column of politics, you will see the word great. It has frequency one. And the total number of frequency in the party category column is eight, so one out of eight. But you might run to a problem, which is that the the word I in the negative sentiment category, there's zero, there's zero instance there, or zero frequency, there's zero, the number is zero there, so it's zero out of five. Then the problem with that is that if there's any probability is zero, then this likelihood. The production of that, as long as any one is zero, then you get a zero. Yes, that could be problematic. To solve this problem, we need to use a called Laplace. I'm not sure how to pronounce this uh this phrase called Laplace uh, smoothing. So basic idea is that we're going to add some number in the both the numerator and denominator to make that make not zero. So k typically is one, and the absolute number. So I use this notation. Absolute of v represents all the unique words across class. So class mainly, mainly here is politic and netic. So all the unique words appear on both politic and netic in the training data. So here, as you can see, that we have eleven unique words. That means that we can rewrite the likelihood in this format. And based on the formula statement we discussed earlier, basically you can write um, this uh, the prior times likelihood and calculate the posterior for both party and analytic. So we calculate two numbers. As you can see, that the the party sentiment the number is greater than the the negative. So we rewrite. I, I put it here. So we can see that we can make a conclusion that since that. 
the policy sentiment, the probability is greater than the analytic, we conclude that the I like the product is likely positive. Okay, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you for watching.